Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter from the Way Church. We're so glad to see you this Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Hey, as you're jumping on, would you go ahead, give me a little thumbs up in the comments, maybe a little wave or, you know, praying hands. Go ahead and wish everybody happy Easter in the comments. As you're jumping in there, we just want to uh, continue to thank you so much for staying connected. Know this, that we love you, we bless you. We're so excited to be able to worship with you this Easter Sunday morning. Come on, somebody, put it in the comments there about how excited you are to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad to be able to have our worship team with us in the special time that we get to have. So we're coming to you from a different place today. We're calling it the chapel. So we're inviting you to join us. Would you go ahead, if you are able to, wherever you're watching today, stand up and worship along with us. Whether you're in your living room, no matter where you are this morning, we want you to participate. You can put the little uh, hands up emojis in there that you're worshiping uh, with us. And so go ahead and interact with one another, comment. Do me a huge favor, share this video, because we want to get the word out that Jesus is risen from the dead. Come on and worship with me this morning. Amen. Come on, let's worship together.
God, we declare right now that we surrender over to you. Come on, go ahead and you can place that in the comments there as you're watching this morning. Put that in the comments as a bold declaration that I surrender. Come on, put that in the comments right now. I surrender. Go ahead, type that in. God, we surrender to you, Lord. Lord, we surrender over to you our wills, our thoughts, our emotions, Lord God. Lord, our own plans and purposes, Lord God. We surrender them over to you this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you that as we surrender, God, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. Lord, it says that you give more grace. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we receive your grace, God, this morning. Lord, we're believing for a miracle to take place. God, we're thanking you for miracles in our homes, miracles in our families, miracles, Lord, on our jobs, miracles in our health. Hallelujah. Lord, miracles in our relationships, God. So, Lord, we thank you that in this moment we can surrender our lives over to you. And that, God, as we do that, you promise to extend your grace to us. So, Lord, we receive that today in Jesus' mighty name. God, we're praying that even right now. Lord, there would be a mighty storm, a mighty moving of your spirit across this land, God. Lord, we join in faith, believing as a church together, God. Boldly declaring that as we, your people, humble ourselves, God. And Lord, we say that we are seeking to know you more. That God, we are asking that you would sweep across this land in a mighty outpouring of your spirit today. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, would you have your way. Lord, would you have your way in me. Lord, would you have your way in your people, Lord God. God, we're asking that you would have your way inside of our homes and our families. Lord, those that don't know you. Lord, may they be touched by your presence even today wherever they're at, God. God, we thank you that you can surround them and invade their space even right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we're praying that people would be sent across their paths, Lord. Lord, to be able to share the good news that there is hope in Jesus because he is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. This is what we're celebrating today. This is why we gather because we celebrate the victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes this moment even possible. So, Lord, we choose to lift you up. And, God, as we do that, you said in your word that you would draw all men unto you. So, Lord, we thank you that you are lifted up today. Hallelujah. Lord, there are churches all across this land lifting up the name of Jesus, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for drawing us today. Lord, we thank you for drawing our loved one. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for drawing people to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Come on. Go ahead. Give God praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. Praise Him in the comments there. Come on. Go ahead and clap in the comments. Yes. Praise Him, somebody. Amen. Well, happy Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. We're so glad to be able to come to you and to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Amen. So why don't you go ahead in the comments there, go ahead, wish everybody a happy Easter. Maybe you can put in there, happy Resurrection Sunday. However you want to go ahead and greet one another. Make sure that you're liking each other's comments. Make sure, do me a favor right now as well as you're doing that. Hit the share button. Let people know that we're celebrating Easter together. Come on, wherever you are, whether it be your kitchen table, the kitchen counter, come on, the living room, the family room, or maybe you didn't even get out of bed. I see you. <laughs> but we're joyful and glad that you're here this morning. Uh, and so we're so excited to be able to worship you and welcome you to the Wake Church uh, here at the chapel. And so we're excited for that, to bring uh, Easter Sunday morning to you. So God bless you all. We love you couple things that I just want to share with you is we'd love that you're staying connected. Make sure if you haven't joined our Facebook group that you go ahead and you request to be in there. We love that. That's where our church people, we're encouraging each other. We post fun things in there, updates and all that kind of stuff. We're praying for one another, encouraging one another. I love what you guys are doing. You're such a blessing and it's a privilege for Emily and I to be able to uh, pastor you guys. You're such a wonderful blessing and we would just want to say Thank you so much, and we've been praying for you. We love the testimonies that are coming out of this, and uh, we're believing for God's continued mighty move inside of you and your homes. Amen. Amen. One of the things that we want to uh, just celebrate right now are the people that God has been giving us a privilege to be able to be reaching right now. 
There's been people that are even watching right now that we've never met before, and we just want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're watching and celebrating Easter together. I hope that if you haven't said yes to Jesus yet, that today is your day. I want you to hear that this morning. Today is your day. This is your opportunity. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Come on, today is your day. Go ahead, put that in the comments there. Today is your day. Come on, somebody say, today is my day. Today is my, yeah, today day. Is my day. Amen. Amen. Come on, we're excited for you. We're so glad that you're here today. And we just want to celebrate. There's been people that have been giving their lives to Christ, and it's been all online through different interactions that we've been having uh, with one another and praying for one another. One of the recent ones that just did that, his name is Izel. So if you're watching today, Izel, we just bless you today. And that's how the whole conversation had started. He just messaged us asking that we pray for blessing. Praise God for that. Come on. Praise God for that. Amen. And how many are grateful that you are a part of a church that not only we pray for people because we believe in the power of prayer. Can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, you can put that in the comments. Amen. We're seeing results and it's exciting because we have a risen Savior. Hallelujah. That's why we get results. Amen. Because Jesus is not dead. He's alive. Praise the Lord. And so obviously I get a little excited about talking about my risen Savior, but <laughs> but he started out asking that we pray for a blessing, and we prayed for a blessing, that God would bless him, that he would encounter Jesus in a powerful way that would completely transform his entire life. And then I asked him, I said, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? Let me tell you today, friend, it is that easy. Sometimes we complicate it. We don't have to get super theological and religious about this whole process of leading somebody to the Lord. Just simply ask somebody, have you ever asked Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? And wait for the response. And he said, no. And so I asked him, I said, if you would like to, I would love to lead you all through messenger in a prayer for you to be able to do that. And he said, okay. So I led him in prayer. And he prayed the prayer. And I told him, let me know when you've prayed that prayer. So then I got to celebrate with him. And he said, thank you. And I let him know that we're going to continue to lift him up in prayer. So that's what we're going to do right now. Come on, church family. Let's go ahead and pray for Isaiah right now. And so, Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Isaiah and that he gave his life to you. And Lord, we celebrate that. Somebody stepping over from death into life. Lord, with his name written in eternity. God, we surround him with faith and love today. Lord, we thank you for continuing to bless him. Show him your favor and your grace, Lord God. May you continue to provide for him, Lord. Lord, may you continue to reveal yourself to him. And Lord, as we just sang, Lord, that is our own heart's cry. Lord, that's Isaiah's cry, Lord, today that we would know you more. So, Lord, I thank you for revealing yourself to Isaiah right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there are others that haven't said yes to you yet, Lord, we're asking that you continue to draw their hearts to you. And as we have the opportunity today to lead them to you, God, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. So I want to encourage you. The time is right now. Come on. We realize how short this time is. There are so many signs about the time that we're living in and all the different things that are happening, not even just right in our own neighborhood, across this nation, but not only in our nation, but rapidly around the world. So I'm hoping that you're catching this, that if you're realizing that the time is short, Jesus said that he is coming and it's soon. And he gives us signals and signs all throughout the scripture of his coming. And let me tell you, we are living in that time, the days where things are multiplying and happening rapidly, rapidly, rapidly taking place. One of the things that just happened was the Sanhedrin had just asked the prime minister of Israel, that they would actually be able to perform a sacrifice on the Temple Mount, not just on the edge of it, because they just did that last year and for the very first time did not get arrested, but now they're actually going to perform it on the Temple Mount. Come on, these are prophecies that are happening right before your eyes, my eyes. You should get excited because that means at any moment, Jesus can split that eastern sky and call us all home. Hallelujah. Come on, isn't that exciting? Soon and very soon, we're going to see the Lord face to face. But you know what? It's not for us to just get up and get out of here. Come on, come on. 
you got to realize that right now, Jesus needs us in the earth because guess what? I know that you know people that need to know his name yet. Because it would be a shame for us to have the greatest news that Jesus rose from the dead and commissioned you and I to go ahead and share that gospel and for you and I to keep that a secret to ourselves just hoping that Jesus would call us home. Amen. Come on, let that sink in for a moment. Come on, I don't know about you, but I care way too much about my loved ones and I'm so grateful for some of them that are watching right now today. I've been praying for you. I know that these that are here with me these that are part of our team, they've got loved ones. They're praying for theirs as well. And we care about them. And that's why God said that he desires that all men would be saved. And so that's why I want you to understand that the time is short. It's a time for us to accelerate what we're doing. It's a time to not hold back any longer. Come on. The time is right now. And today what we're talking about is it's time for a miracle. Come on. It's time for a miracle. Go ahead. Place that in the comments this morning. It's time for a miracle. How many of you are believing for a miracle? Come on, maybe you need a miracle in your house. Put that in there. I'm believing for a miracle in my house. Put my house, my house, Lord. Lord, I'm asking that you would see me this morning. Amen. <laughs> Whether I'm in my pajamas or you're wearing the, you know, your suit coat like I am today. <laughs> Lord, we thank you that you see us. Amen. But it's time for a miracle. It's a time for our miracle to take place all across this land. And we're believing for that together. So we celebrate what God is doing through us. And I want to take a moment just to say thank you to those that continue to sow into the kingdom of God. I just had a conversation this week with uh, one of the precious ladies in our church. She had wanted me to call her because she wanted to make sure that we were receiving her offerings. Because she cares about the house of God. And I just want to say thank you so much that you care about his house and the work that is going forward. We say thank you because you make moments like Izell's possible. And I just want to take a moment to just let you know, when you make those phone calls, when you sow in your, your gifts, some of you have been sending them in the mail. I just want to say thank you. When we see those, let me tell you, it strengthens us. To know that there's a body of believers that, you know what, it's not just Emily and I, it's not just Justin or Mike or Joe or Daniel that's here this morning. And Peter, he's helping me out as well, amen. But it's not just us, but there's a whole group of us that believe in the great work of the gospel. And so I want to say thank you for sowing into the kingdom and continuing to do so. And I want to give you an opportunity even this morning if you would like to be able to continue to partner with us financially so that there's more ourselves. Some of you have heard the story about Michaela. She was 18. She just recently gave her life to the Lord. Amen. Come on, these are lives that are changed for eternity. Amen. Amen. And it's because faithful people just like you are continuing to sow and making that possible. And so I just want to encourage you, if it's in your heart this morning, would you be willing to sow a significant offering for Easter Sunday to celebrate what Jesus has done, amen? To celebrate the victory, to let others be able to continue to know that Jesus is Lord, amen? amen. Right. So while you're preparing your gifts, if you'd like to text in your gift, you can simply text in the amount to the number that's 414 Two five five zero zero three eight. In a moment, what we'll do is we're going to put that in the comments for you so that you can be able to text in your gift that way. Uh, some of you, you like to give online. You'd like to go to thewaitchurch.com and click on the giving link, and then you can follow the prompts that way. If you'd like to mail in your gift, I know some of you have been asking that. Just go ahead and message us personally or email us, and we'll be able to help you get that correct address so that uh, we can receive your gifts that way. And so we say thank you so much. While you're doing that, I just want to share a couple other testimonies that have been happening during this time. Come on, we believe in the power of prayer, but most importantly, we believe in the God who answers prayer because we know that He is alive. We're not praying to a dead saint. We're not praying to somebody that's dead and not alive. Come on, our God is alive. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And so we're excited to share that. There was a lady that had asked that we would pray for a friend by the name of Kim who had the coronavirus. We prayed for her. She he was healed and recovered. Amen. Come on, that's exciting yes, news. Amen. amen. There was another one. We prayed for her daughter. Her name was uh, Robin. And we prayed for her. And she was healed as well. And one lady, she just let me know just this week that she is three weeks sober because of the prayers that we prayed. Come on. Come on. Celebrate. Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise God. 
Jesus still saves, heals, sets free, delivers. Come on, amen. Sets people free from the addictions and bondages that they have. And we thank God for the victory that is ours because Jesus is alive. That is what we're celebrating today. That's what you and I were sowing into together to continue to share this good news that Jesus still saves. Hallelujah. Not just so that we can take a ticket to heaven. Come on, that's important. Nobody wants to go to hell. But guess what? It's not just someday going to be, you know, when we go to the sweet by and by. But it's for you and I right now. Jesus said in John 10.10 10, that I have come. Hallelujah. How many are grateful that Jesus came? Yes. yes. He invaded our situation. And I'm believing today that he's invading yours right now while you're watching this morning. Wherever you are, whatever situation, whatever miracle you need, I believe that Jesus can invade it even right now. He said that I have come, hallelujah, that you might have and enjoy life, having it to the full until it overflows, praise God. We are believing that this year is still the year of overflow. Amen. We're seeing it happen. People are coming to Jesus in unprecedented ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, the time is now. Praise yeah. God. God can still overflow in your home, yes. in your family, and in your finances, and in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive today the life of God. Praise God. So let's pray. Let's pray over our offerings and our time as together as we continue to sow into the kingdom of God. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. And Lord, that you have given us this great gospel commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Lord, we count it a privilege to be able to sow financially into your kingdom today. Lord, I thank you for those that have been sowing during this entire time, Lord, strengthening this church, Lord, strengthening this body of believers, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for those seeds sown. Lord, I call harvest in today in Jesus' name. I call overflow into people's lives today in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you that as we give today, it shall be given back good measure, pressed out, shaken together, and running over. So, Lord, we receive that today. And, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, not only are we believing for that, but, God, we're believing for more people like Michaela. Lord, we're believing for more people like Isaiah. Lord, we're believing for more names being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Lord, because we know that that's the only thing that we can take to heaven with us is people. So, Lord, we sow today. And, Lord, I thank you for it now. Bless both gift and giver in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you as you sow today. Praise God. I know you're watching, but that's all right. I still need to get it little sip of water. You see me do it at church, you can see me do it now. So <laughs> We appreciate you very much and we're grateful for you. So why don't you do me a favor and go ahead, if you did not yet, you can put in the comments, time for a miracle. Time for a miracle. We've been in this series of messages and we've just been continuing it, talking about the time is now. How many of you are ready for some now things to take place in your life? Amen. There's been some things that we've been believing for, and I'm believing that it's going to happen now in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is now. It words it this way. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I know there's some things that aren't seen. And I want you to know that your faith is important, and it takes place right now. It's not just yesterday's faith, but it is right now. That is what faith is. And so I want to share some of the Easter story with you. And let your faith arise this morning. And the fact that our Savior is alive. And that's why we can say that our faith is right now. Because Jesus is alive. So if you would, turn with me in your Bibles, if you've got them with you this morning, to John chapter 20. And we're going to look at verse 1, and it's the story of the empty tomb, that happy Easter Sunday morning. And you know what? Maybe it wasn't quite so happy. And I want you to, to just think about it for a moment as we read the scripture here. Ask yourself this question, why did Jesus go to the cross? Why did Jesus go to the cross? Maybe somebody could do me a favor, type that in the comments there. Why did Jesus go to the cross? I want you to be thinking about uh, that 
with me this morning as we uh, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Verse 1, it says this, Now on the first day of the week, once you realize that it's Sunday, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. Somebody say early. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> While it was still dark. So this was before sunrise. You know, it, I want you to picture it, because sometimes we read these stories whether it be Christmas or Easter, and sometimes we kind of go over them and we don't really capture some of the moments that are taking place there. I want you to understand this, that Mary, she was coming, she's by herself in this moment. She went to the tomb very early. And I wonder if there's a reason why she came early, so that maybe it was possibly that nobody would see her come. Come on, this was her risen Savior. This was the, the one... Uh, that they were believing was going to be the Messiah that would save them even right then in that time that would totally upset the, the political scene. Some of us were hoping for something like that to take place. But I want you to realize that their Messiah was crucified and was just buried now. And so now she's coming while it was still dark. I mean, picture that in the twilight early moments of the morning. Just a little while ago this past week, I mean, we woke up and it was foggy, completely foggy out. And I don't know if it was that Easter morning, but I mean, imagine her coming and it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. I mean, could you imagine her feelings, wondering what in the world is taking place? Verse 2, it says, Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple who Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. Come on, hear that in her voice. She just went to go see, and the stone had been rolled away. She didn't even know what had happened yet, so she ran back to Peter and to John. She comes and says, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple were going to the tomb, so they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying there, yet did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb went in also, and saw and believed. I hope today that you're going to see some things in the scripture, and if you're not a believer, that you're going to believe. Maybe it's been, maybe Easter is just a tradition for you, and I want you to know that you're welcome. But I hope that today that you're going to see some things that will help you to believe just like these disciples. For as yet they did not know, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Even though Jesus was talking about it, they still didn't have the understanding or they still didn't really know what was taking place. Come on, there's things happening around our world that many of us, we don't even know and understand. But come on, we can go to the scriptures and see what's taking place. And that's what I believe it will happen to us today as we take a look at the word of God. Then it says the disciples, they went away again to their own homes. Come on, they didn't even realize what had taken place. They went back to their own homes. Come on, they weren't celebrating. I know we are this morning, but they weren't celebrating yet. <laughs> they didn't even know what had transpired or took place. But here this verse 11, it says, But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. Come on, why is she weeping? This wasn't a happy Easter Sunday. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Come on, I want you to ask yourselves this again. Is it possible that we've maybe seen Jesus and not even recognize him? Come on, is it possible that we've seen him and not even understood who he was? Come on, when you go to understand and you see the scripture that we are his body here in the earth. And that when you say yes to Jesus, he comes to dwell on the inside of you. Let me tell you, brother and sister, people should be seeing Jesus all around them. Many of us were looking and asking and pleading that God would move across this land. But guess how he's going to do it? 
He's going to do it through you and I. And I hope that you and I are hungry enough to see more of God on the inside of us. So that we can see more of God coming through us. Amen. Amen. So that other people can go ahead and actually turn and see and recognize that it's Jesus here in the earth that's ministering. That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, that's a powerful spot to say amen. 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 Come on, Jesus, or Jesus was standing there and she didn't even know that it was him. Verse 15, Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? I believe Jesus has been speaking to many of us and we haven't even recognized that it's the master's voice. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned, and she said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Come on, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear him calling you today. I want you to hear him calling you even in this moment. I want you to hear him calling you by name. Come on, Jesus, he knows your name. Whether you've ever called upon him or not, he knows your name. Come on, he is calling you even this morning. Hallelujah. Because he's alive and he loves you. He went to the cross to die for you, to bring you into a relationship with him. Amen. Hear his voice this morning. He's calling you. Hallelujah. He's calling you by name. He's drawing you into his presence this morning. Amen. Praise God, I believe that you're even sensing him now. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Come on, praise God. What an exciting thing that Jesus is alive. I want you to know this morning, that he is risen from the dead. In a moment, we're going to talk about why did Jesus go to the cross. But I want you to see this. We celebrate this morning the very victory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, turn with me into your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Come on, we're believing for miracles. Come on, the time is now for a miracle to take place in your life. The time is now for a miracle to take place in your home. Come on, the time is now for a miracle to take place on your job, on your finances, in your health. Come on, a miracle to set you free from that which is holding you back from being able to do all that God has called you to do. Whether it be the shame of the past, the bondage that tries to hold you yet, whether it's sin or addiction, shame or guilt, today it comes off in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of the victory of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. Put victory in the comments. Victory is mine. Come on, put it in the comments right there. Let me see it. Victory is mine. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56 says this, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Thank God. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is what we're celebrating today. Thanks be giving victory in Jesus name. Amen. It's all because of Jesus that we have the victory. Hallelujah. Come on. Despite whatever's going on around you, despite your circumstances, I want you to say this morning, but thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. So turn with me to the next one. That's the companion to this second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. We'll take a look at this one. Come on. We just said, but thanks be to God. Come on. When the enemy comes against you. Come on. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. When the enemy comes against you and he wants to remind you of your past, I want you to say, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Come on. You remind him of that. You stick that but in there. Uh-huh. Praise right. God. Come on. Right. But thanks be to God. When he wants to show up with symptoms at your door, you say, uh uh-huh. But thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I have this victory because Jesus is alive. Jesus won this victory, the one that we're celebrating today, because he is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when the enemy shows up and tells me I'm not going to have enough, 
Guess what? I say nah, -uh, but thanks be to God. Come on, you gotta stick the right but in there. Amen. Hallelujah. So 2 Corinthians 2.14 says this, now thanks be to God. Come on, we've been talking this whole year about the time is now. Yeah. I want you to start believing that your miracle is now. Today is the day for your miracle to take place. Because Jesus is alive, he's made it possible for you and I. Amen. Amen. So now, thanks be to God. Somebody help me out. Put that in the comments there. Now, thanks. Come on. Remember, faith is now. It's not the past. It's not the future. It is right now. Thanks be to God who leads me, always leads me in triumph. Come on, it's not sometimes, it's not maybe, but it's always, he's always leading me in triumph in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And get this, this is what I want you to hear again. Come on, this is important for you to pay attention here. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Amen. Come on, he's desiring to use you and I to diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. You heard me say on Palm Sunday, and we talked about that, where Mary was at the feet of Jesus and she poured out a special ointment, an ointment of spike nard from the alabaster jar. Come on, she broke that and that whole fragrance filled the house. That fragrance was there when Jesus was being crucified. Come on, when he was being whipped and beat and scourged. For you and I, that fragrance was filling his nostrils. I believe that was the thing that helped him to continue to go forward. Because it says in the word of God that it was the joy that was set before him that he was able to endure the cross. And that fragrance wasn't a fragrance of defeat, but as a fragrance of a special anointing, reminding him of the ones that he was going there for. Come on, the joy that was set before him was you and I. That's how he was able to endure the pain of the cross, amen. amen. And now that fragrance continues. Come on, the fragrance of Christ, hallelujah. Come on, I believe it's that same fragrance, that special fragrance, God is desiring to diffuse that throughout all the world. Come on, there's a fragrance of fear that has swept across our land. But come on, we refuse to fear in Jesus' name. Because God always leads us in victory and triumph through His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And He's wanting to diffuse faith all across this land. Changing the smell. Changing the fragrance. Ha uh ha. -huh. Amen. Because there is a smell of victory in the air today. Hallelujah. Come on. It's not just you and I celebrating Easter. But churches all across the world today are celebrating the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And right now we are diffusing that knowledge all across the land. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. It's something to get excited about. And God is desiring to use you this morning. He's desiring to use me this morning. Amen. How exciting is that? Praise God. So what knowledge? What knowledge? This goes back to what I asked you before. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 53. We're going to find out why he went to the cross. Come on, this is the knowledge. This is the knowledge for the, the reason why we're celebrating today. Come on, it's not just that he rose from the dead, but why? Isaiah 53, verse 1 says this, Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Hear me, this is talking about Jesus. This is a prophecy that Isaiah had, looking forward to the cross of what would be taking place. Verse 3 says this, he is despised and rejected by man. Come on, some of you have suffered rejection. Some of you have been despised before. But this is why Jesus went to the cross. It's called the great exchange. Hallelujah. This is what he's doing today. And he had made it final with his victory, rising triumphantly over it. But I want you to hear the power that's in it today. 
For he was despised and rejected by man. So if you've been despised and rejected, I want you to know that you don't have to walk in that any longer. Because Jesus, he took it for you. He was a man of sorrows and pains. And he was acquainted with grief, which also translated sickness. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and our sicknesses and carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. I want you to hear this today. God is not smiting you. God is not pouring out his wrath on you. God is not getting his vengeance on you. This is right here in the scripture. It is telling you where he poured it out, who he smited. It was on the cross that Jesus received the wrath of God for you and I. So hear me today. What is happening in this world is a result of sin. But we don't have to live in that. We can receive a different kingdom, a different nature because of what Jesus has done. Amen. We can receive his exchange in our life. Hallelujah. This is the good news. This is why we're sharing it. Amen. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised and uh, beaten for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. It goes on in verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why did it please him to be able to do that? So that he wouldn't have to do that to you and I. So that he was able to reconcile you and I to himself. He was able to make peace with man all through Jesus Christ. Come on, if he would have just died for our sins and was buried, let me tell you, that was only half of it. He had to rise triumphantly because it was in his resurrection that he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Amen. They have no longer any power over you. Sin has no control over you any longer. Sickness does not belong in you any longer. Amen. Poverty is not yours any longer. Amen. Because Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law, redeeming us from all of those things. Praise God. That's why he went to the cross. That's why we celebrate his resurrection because it's victory. Amen. Hallelujah. So make sure that you continue to say, but thanks be to God, because it's right now that Jesus is leading us in his triumph. Amen. Amen. All the time, desiring to diffuse through us the fragrance of this very knowledge. Praise God. So if you haven't done so already, tag somebody in the comments. Let them know that we're here to pray for them. Share the video. Let them know that they can receive the good news that Jesus loves them, died upon the cross for them, was buried, and he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Come on, this is an exciting day. Amen. There's a miracle that's taking a place right now. I believe even as we're preaching this message that miracles are taking place in your homes. Some of you have been believing for things to take place. I want you to know that your miracle is today. Hallelujah. Come on, it's time for a miracle, praise God. That's what we celebrate, the greatest miracle, the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. So when he rose from the dead, there, did you know this, that several other resurrections took place that same day? Because of the mighty power that was exuded through him, it affected other graves that opened up that day. Amen. So I'm believing today as we even preach about it and as we talk about it, the graves that have been trying to hold you, you'll be able to walk out of them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Those dark places, those things that would try to control you, they have no power over you any longer. So don't let this miracle pass you by. Come on, turn with me to one final scripture as we get ready to close today. And I want you to see this. Luke chapter 24. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It's called The Road to Emmaus. I want you to see this in Luke chapter 24, verse 13. It says this, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus. These were two of Jesus' followers, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. So they were leaving Jerusalem. They're headed back to Emmaus. And they talked together of all the things which had happened, everything that just happened during Holy Week. That's what they were talking about. So it was while they conversed and reasoned 
that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But hear this, verse 16 says, but their eyes, come on, their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Come on, they were blinded by their despair. They were blinded by their grief. I want you to realize today that some of you, you're not seeing the thing that God desires to open up for you because you've been blinded by despair. You've been blinded by grief. You've been blinded by setbacks. You've been blinded by failure or disappointments. I want you to know today that today your eyes are going to be opened in Jesus' name. Come on. He is still the one that opens up blind eyes. Hallelujah. Don't let your miracle pass you by today. Come on. Let Jesus draw near to you. Come on, and we know that the scripture says this, that if we would draw near to him, he would draw near to us. We sang about that earlier today. Lord, I surrender. Come on, even in this moment, if you've been going through some disappointments, I want you to surrender your life over to him. And just begin to humble yourself before God and say, Lord, I desire more of you. Come on, put that in the comments this morning. Say, God, I desire more of you. Come on, Lord, I desire more of you. Come on, don't hold back any longer. There's no more time for that. Yes. You don't have 15 years. You don't have 20 years. You don't have life to live, and then I'll get it straight before the end. Come on, time is short. The time is now. Time for you to draw near to Him. And He promises that as you would do that, He would draw near to you. Verse 17 says, and He said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk around and are sad? Come on, I've been hearing so many different conversations happening around. People are talking about it on the news. People are saying things on, on social media. Come on, we should be hope dealers, amen, because we've got the greatest thing living on the inside of us. Jesus Christ, the one that rose victorious over the coronavirus, amen. One of those stripes took care of that coronavirus. Hallelujah. It's by His stripes we are healed. Amen. Come on. The government rests upon whose shoulders? Jesus' shoulders. He is still King of kings and Lord of lords. We don't look to man to solve all of our problems. We look to Him. So don't you talk about all these sad things that way. Don't give voice to it. You speak life. Amen. You speak victory. Come on. Be reminded when you're hearing sad talk, when you're hearing bad talk, you say, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Come on, he's given us victory over this depression. Come on, he's given us victory over this recession. Come on, he's given us victory over this sickness and disease. Come on, somebody, amen. Amen. Yes. That's right. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? <laughs> Are you the only one around that has not heard what has taken place? Have you not known the things which have happened in these days? I mean, come on. We kind of laugh. I mean, it'd be somebody like saying that today. Coronavirus? What coronavirus? I mean, everybody was talking about it. And that's how they responded to Jesus. Verse 19, and he said to them, what things? What things? So they said to him, I love it when Jesus messes with people. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we think that we've got it all figured out. Come on, but if you would humble yourself, and we've said that a lot this morning, if you would humble yourself, come on, I admit, I don't have it all figured out. Come on, I'm not going to limit God and place him in a box and think that he can only move a certain way or through some person, and that's the only person. Come on, sometimes God's greatest answers are in the most unlikely places and happen through some of the most unlikely people. Come on, so don't count yourself out today. Come on, don't limit God. Amen. It's time for a miracle. Come on, it's time for a miracle. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was the prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified. But we were hoping. Come on, but we were hoping. And I know many of you can echo those same sentiments this morning, but we were hoping that it was He who was going to redeem Israel. Come on, they were looking at Him the wrong way. I wonder how you're looking at Him this morning. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find His body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said He was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman 
had said. But him they did not see. And then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. Man, I would have loved to have been there. But Jesus just opens up the Old Testament and just continues while they're walking, sharing everything that was prophesied about himself. Then the disciples, they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him. Come on, hear that this morning. They constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Come on, this is, picture it now, this is after, after all the little things that you've done for Easter. And I know our gatherings are totally different this year. Some of us are not going over to mom's place. We're not going over to grandma's. Some of us, we've been able to have the postponing egg hunts and all that kind of stuff. But I want you to realize that even at the very end of the day, they were still spending time with Jesus. And he went in to stay with them because guess what? They invited him in. I want you to know today that you can invite Jesus in to your life. That he will abide with you. He promises to never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, he's not distant. He's always right here. Right near. And this is the powerful part that I want you to catch here. It says, now it came to pass as they sat at the table with him. Remember, this is evening now. That he took bread. He blessed it. And he broke it. In a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to take communion together. And I hope... That even if you haven't been so, and you can prepare right now, I'm giving you your two-minute warning to go get your elements, all right? <laughs> We're going to take communion together as a church family, and I want to thank Mike and Gail for making that opportunity for some of you to be able to grab those elements this week and, and pick those up so that we can take communion together. But if you don't, you can grab a cracker or a wafer, maybe a piece of bread or whatever you have in your house, maybe some juice, whatever you might have. And I want you to get prepared while I'm continuing to share this. You can continue to listen while you're grabbing that. But this is what it says, that he took bread, he blessed, and he broke it. Hear me now as I share, share this. And gave it to them. Then it was then, in that moment, that their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And they vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scripture to us. Come on, my prayer has been for you while I've been preparing this message. That while I would share it, that your hearts would even be burning right now. As we've been sharing the truth about Jesus. Come on, the, the thing that they saw is that when he broke it and he blessed it, I believe that they saw the nail prints that were in his hands. And that's when they recognized that it was him. Come on, today what I want us to be able to do is to gather around the proverbial Lord's table and to be able to have those moments where he would bless it and break that bread. That today you would see Jesus like you've never seen him before. Come on, that your eyes would be open. We've talked about that. Has, have your eyes been blinded by grief? Maybe you're like Mary today and you're so caught up in the whole moment of trying to figure out what's going on in life, that you don't even recognize the Savior standing before you. But maybe it's today, I'm praying that you would be able to see as well as hear. Hear Him calling to you even right now. He's calling you by name. He's inviting you to come in to a relationship with Him. Come on, in a moment we're going to break bread together and I believe that you're going to see Jesus like you've never seen before. So what I want to do in this moment as we conclude our message together is to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come on, if you're already a believer, I want you to go ahead and share the video right now so that somebody can hear this. Make sure that you're tagging people in the comments. Come on, be praying with me as I'm praying, as I'm giving this invitation because there's no greater time, no greater opportunity than right now to say yes to Jesus. Come on, think about it. You'll never forget Easter of 2020, the day that you said yes to Jesus. Come on, maybe you've been in quarantine. Come on, there's no better time for you than right now to give your life to Jesus. 
We don't know how much longer that we have here on the earth. I mean, think about it naturally. There's people that pass away from all sorts of causes. You don't know how long that you have, to, but today is your day. Come on, today is your day. I want you to know that today is the day of salvation. Today is the opportunity for you to say yes to Jesus. If you've never said yes to him today, I want to give you that opportunity to ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, <clears throat> to forgive you of your sins, and that you can go to heaven with him. Amen. Maybe today you've been the one where you've allowed the enemy to come in and crowd out the hope that's inside of you. I want to give you that opportunity to come back to him. Start fresh. Start new this Easter Sunday. Come on, celebrate the resurrection on an awesome, powerful note, knowing that you are saved and on your way to heaven. Maybe lastly, you would say, you know what, Pastor? I've given my life to Christ before, but it seems as though the devil, he's just been pounding me, getting me to doubt and to worry whether or not any of that mattered. I want you to know today that you can have a know-so experience, that you can pray with me right now and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, yes, you are a child of God. So I'm going to give you that opportunity right now, and I want you to go ahead and to pray with me. Just simply repeat this prayer out loud, no matter where you are right now. Say this, dear Lord Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart, to be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died upon the cross, that you were buried. And today I'm celebrating that you rose from the dead. And I ask that you would fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power helping me to follow you all the days of my life. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, celebrate being with you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, this is the victory that we celebrate right now. People have just stepped over from death into life. This is what Easter is all about. Celebrating that people can come and say yes to Jesus. They have the risen Savior living on the inside of them. Hear me, loved one, if you've just done that. The Word of God says this, that you are a brand new creation. All the old has passed away. Behold, everything is brand new. Come on, this is exciting. Yes, hallelujah. You are brand new today, this morning. A brand new creation that has never existed before. Why? Because the very life of God has come to live on the inside of you. You have the Spirit of God now dwelling on the inside of you. That same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is living inside of you, giving you the same exact victory over death, hell, and the grave that He gave Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yes. It's exciting to celebrate with you. Come on. Yes. Somebody put in the comments here. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. What an exciting time to be living right now where people are ready to receive Jesus like never before. Come on. I hope that you've got your communion elements ready. So if you would, you can go ahead and grab those. And we're going to take communion together and close out. As we do that, our worship team is going to come on back. <laughs> And they're going to finish with one awesome song pronouncing a blessing over you this Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm excited because of what Jesus is doing in and through you. We're believing that an amazing miracle is taking place right now. I just sense the presence of the Lord even right now as we're sharing this message with you about His miracle power that is going at work in your life right now. Do you receive it? Come on. Put I receive it in the comments there. I receive it. Claim it as yours. Amen. Claim it by faith that it is yours. Remember, now faith is right now. Amen. We're believing. Come on. Believe with me together. Let's pray. Even as we're talking about this right now. That Heavenly Father, we're believing for a miracle to take place in these homes that are watching right now. Lord, in these lives, Lord, we thank you for the work that you've already begun. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you're faithful to complete it. 
Lord, we take our eyes off of our circumstances, and Lord, we look to you, Jesus. God, I thank you that you've been opening people's eyes this morning, hallelujah, to you, the hope of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our risen Savior, hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we thank you that you're opening up our ears, hearing you, the master call. Lord, would we be faithful to follow you in all that you have for us. God, we thank you that you're revealing to you, uh, to us, your people, your plans, your purposes, your pursuits, Lord God. May we pursue you with all that we have, seeing miracles take place all across this land. Lord God, we desire that you would use us, that people would see Jesus all across this nation in Jesus' name. Would you use us this morning to bring revival here in this place, bring revival, Lord, in our homes, bring revival in our families. I'm calling home the lost ones, Lord, today in Jesus' name. The prodigals, Lord, we're calling them home today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for that today. If you've got your elements, you can go ahead and hold those in your hand. You can peel back the top portion there, which reveals the wafer. Whether you have the wafer like this, or if you have bread, whatever you have in your house, crack. I want you to hold that in your hand and I want you to remember why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross so that his body could be broken for you and I. Come on, it was during that time that he was on that cross, the veil in the temple was torn in two. Hebrews talks about his body was the veil that was torn so that you can and I could enter into the heavenly holy of holies, right into the presence of God. Come on, his body was broken for you and I so that we could receive health and healing in our bodies. Come on, you don't have to be afraid of sickness and disease. You don't have to be afraid of pain. You don't have to be afraid of these things because Jesus, he bore them for you and I. And it's by his stripes that you and I, we can receive healing today in our bodies. Come on, miracles taking place. The time is now. And I want you to receive your miracle today. Maybe you've been broken on the inside. We talked about that being despised and rejected by man. Come on, Jesus, he took that for you and I. And he is the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the one that restores our soul. So that brokenness on the inside of you today, I want you to receive healing today. So let's hold that and as I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that your son Jesus, his body was broken for you and I this morning. So that we could enter into the very presence of God. The veil which was torn so that we could have access to the heavenly holies of holies. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that we can receive healing this morning. The miracles that need to take place in our bodies. Lord, because of what Jesus has provided for us. So Lord, we receive those today in faith believing in Jesus' name. Break and let's eat together. If you would, if you have one of the communion cups, you can peel back the second portion, which reveals the grape juice. And that represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, just a couple days ago, we celebrated what he did on the cross. Yes. How his blood was shed on that cross called Calvary. It was poured out on that cross so that not only would our sins be covered, but they would actually be cleansed, washing us completely clean. The Word of God says this, that Jesus, who knew no sin, actually became sin for you and I so that we could become the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, that's part of the victory that we celebrate today, is that He rose victorious over sin. Come on, sin had no control over Him. And because He rose victorious over sin, hear me this morning, sin has no control over you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, that's part of the victory that we celebrate today as believers, amen. It's part of the victory that we get to celebrate that our sins are washed completely clean today in Jesus' name, amen. I talked about earlier this week how the blood of Jesus is applied. It's applied in heaven, it's applied in earth, and it's applied inside of our hearts. And that's what we're going to do today is with the hyssop of our mouth, we're going to apply that blood and we're going to thank Jesus for the blood that he shed on Calvary that washes us clean, that grants us access into the very presence of God, satisfying all the requirements that were there 
We thank Him for the blood. Come on, thank Him for the blood. Yes. Put that in the comments there. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed for me. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for the blood that washes me clean. Amen. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hear me this morning. There is no amount of prayer. There's no amount of money that you can give. There's no amount of good deeds that you can do that will earn your righteousness. Hear me. It's in this moment that we celebrate the victory that Jesus has made available to you and I. It's only by the blood. Amen. And we celebrate his victory this morning. Let's partake together and then I'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Come on, wherever you're at, just raise your hands. Just begin to thank Him in your home, in your bedroom. Come on, wherever you're watching. Come on, even if there's people all around, just go ahead and lift up your hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Son, Jesus. Lord, we celebrate the victory today. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your victory that is ours. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing even right now in our homes and our families. Lord, we receive miracles today. Hallelujah. God, we desire to be a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Allowing the Spirit of God to move through us. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you can do the impossible. And Lord, we believe, we choose to believe, Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ. We confess Him as Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we call upon the name of the Lord. And we thank you that as we do that, it says that we shall be saved. So, Lord, today we give thanks for the victory. Hallelujah. We celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, making all of this available to us, Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we bless those today who are watching, Lord. Maybe those that are watching later on. Lord, we thank you for them today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Receive this final song today. Stay with us. Worship with us. Receive the blessing as Justin and our worship team pronounce it over you. Amen.
God bless you this Easter. Bless you. You celebrate the risen Lord today. God bless you. Have a great day.